Hello everyone. Welcome to Knotheads. My name is Keith and I'm going to show you how to make these prayer crosses. This is my introductory video. I've not tried to do one before, but I've had a number of people over the last two years, I've been making these for over two years, who've asked me to teach them how to do this. And there's a lot here to remember, and so I decided that I wasn't going to try to teach anybody else. I tried it once. I wasn't going to try to teach anybody else until I could put a video out there because of how much there is to remember, and it was confusing for a lot of folks. So I wanted to do it this way. Uh, this is going to actually be a, a series of, of videos, and we're going to start out today with just doing the first part of it, and uh, then in subsequent videos, I will show you how to do the rest. As you can see, this has a, a snake knot cross on it. I used to put wooden crosses on them, but that was getting expensive, and considering that I can use some of my scraps for some of this, I decided on, on using that instead. To do these prayer crosses, you're going to need two feet. This is a little over two feet, but two strings of two feet uh, of one color of paracord. As long as they match, they don't really have to be the same as one of these others. I just choose it because when I'm measuring it out, it's easier to go ahead and cut them at the same time. This is about seven yards of paracord. You need two different colors. They can all be done in one color, but I've just learned that it's easier to be able to see, especially when you're learning how to do that. You're also going to, it's optional, you're going to need a bead, a uh, wooden bead that four strands of paracord can go through for tools. You need a, I use, uh, you know, I always call these you know, forceps, Hobby Lobby calls them hemostats. Uh, you need hemostats or forceps. I really like to use a crochet hook. I've used some bigger. This is a nine millimeter size M. Uh, you don't have to have it, but I just think it makes it easier. A uh, pair of scissors or a knife, and you need a lighter. This happens to be a, a torch lighter. I kind of like them a little better too. This is also something that's optional. I don't use them as much anymore, but these are the, the clips that hold shirts together when they're in packaging. I bought a bunch of them from Amazon and I'm going to show you how I used them when I did. I've gotten good enough at it now that I really don't need them to, to keep my my knots too consistent. I, they're, they have some problems, but for the most part they do okay. I One of these I just saw was a little longer than the other one. Doesn't really matter. They're both plenty long, but we're going to start out by tying that snake knot cross and I'm going to do the bottom of it first. I know some people like to start from the top. I usually grab whichever one I, I get, but where I take and pinch into a bite at the center of this particular piece of cord and then you're going to take the left strand, come over the right and then under both of them and then bring the right strand underneath the left and then back through that hole that you made. There are plenty of videos if you don't particularly like my teaching method on how to tie a snake, no, snake knot cross out on YouTube. Feel free to go check out one of the other ones. Uh, you will need to look back at my last video that will be part of this series to actually finish the cross because I will put that crown button knot in into the cross and to actually finish the whole prayer rope. And again, we're going to take and we're going to take the left strand, go over the right and under the right, creating that loop. Then we're going to take the what's now the right strand, come under the left and go back through the hole again. And then pull it up tight with that first knot. Once 
one more time, go over the, take the right, excuse me, take the left strand to go over the right, under the right to create a loop, and then you're going to bring what is now on the right side, you're going to come underneath the left, and you're going to go back through the hole. We're going to tie six of these for this cross. left hand over the right, right, then back under the right to create your loop, bring the right underneath the left, over the left, and then back through that loop. And that's four on the way to six. Need two more. So we're going to come over the left, I'm sorry, left over the right, where this right hand cord is already through that hole. We're going to bring the right under the left and back through the hole. These snake knots are pretty quick knots to tie but it will get a little bit more difficult here in just a few minutes. I'm going to take the le left strand again, go over the right, and then under the right, bring the right under the left, fold it over the left, and go back through the hole. Now we're going to take that part, it's got it's six snake knots in it now, we're going to just set it off to the side for a minute and we're going to take this other piece and we're going to once again create a bite, but we don't, it, it's, you don't have to have this pinched quite as far up here because we're going to actually leave a loop in the top of this one like you might for a keychain. This is what's going to go into the through this loop is where our other pieces of paracord will go to hang on there so we're going to take again go over, left over the right then under the right under both of them actually and then we're going to bring the right under the left then over the left and back through the hole and leave yourself a loop there And that's our first one. We're going to tie three on this piece. Over the right, under the right, then bring the right under the left, and back through the hole. And the last time on this one, now take your left strand and go over the right, under the right to create your loop, then bring the right under the left, and then go back in from the top to the bottom, back through that hole again. Now I told you it was going to get a little more difficult, and right here is the place, because we're going to take and join these two together to make the side arms of the cross. You have each piece and I like to bring them together much like this. Now some people use a binder clip here. I have used them. I think they're both it's difficult either way. Some people think it is easier with the binder clip. You would clip this side where you can work with this side. Now you're going to bring again the one that would be on the left, over the right, back under the right to create your loop. Then you're going to pick the right up, bring it under the left, and back through the hole again. And this is where it does it is somewhat easier to tighten these up when you have 
the other side in a a binder clip. It's a little bit easier to do. There we go. Now, because I'm not using a clip, I'm going to turn it around immediately and I'm going to tie the knots on the other side. So I'm going to take the left, go over the right, under the right, bring the right side under the left, and back through the hole. And once you have both of the first knots done on the sides, the rest of it is just exactly like we did with the top and the bottom of the cross. But you need to make sure you've got these first knots pretty tight. Left side over the right and back under the right to create your loop. Right, left, left goes over the right again and you're going to take that right strand and bring it back down through that hole. And I go on and usually tie all three of them on the second side before I go back to the first. pick up right where you left off with the first one and you've got three snake knots on that arm of the cross and we're going to put three snake knots on this arm. All three arms, I mean the top and both arms have, have half the number of knots in them that the bottom of the cross has. I've done one that was identical on all four of the wings of the cross but most people like this more Roman cross better and so that's what I usually tie. Now that we've got all of our knots in there and take our scissors, cut off the excess now, Again, this isn't something you have to do. I just like doing it this way. I take and fluff the ends of these up before I actually melt them. I just I think that a lot of the time when you've done it and they start to melt together, it holds in to the knot better. Also, I'm very careful that I do this from the side. I used to try to melt from the top down and you end up, and this one didn't hold all that well, but you end up with uh, scorching your, your cord. So I don't tend to do that much anymore. I try to do it from the side. It doesn't scorch as bad. And there you have it. Other than put, putting that crown button knot into the cross, the cross is done. And uh, we're going to set it aside and I will see you next time.